So another thing people always ask me about motorcycle pursuits, um, quads, uh, off-road bikes, scramblers, and just stolen bikes in general. So uh, TPAC guidelines were the fact that we weren't allowed to pursue motorcycles. Basically, anyone on a motorcycle you had to abort. Um, and just before I left, I think about, say, probably a year before I left, the TPAC regulations changed. And they basically said a year ago that you're not allowed, from a year ago, you're allowed to pursue motorbikes. Before that time, you weren't allowed to pursue motorbikes, but it still didn't stop me in the past because if someone's making off on a motorbike and they need it to be stopped, they still get stopped. Um, if you need to make contact with a motorbike, I'd still make contact with a motorbike. Uh, the reason being is there was sort of like this um, grey area where people think they could go do what they want, you could go commit any crime you want, make off and we'd never catch you, never stop you. Um, but I were always one of these people that I just thought, no, you're breaking law, you're breaking law. So let me give you these three examples. One of them, I'm on patrol doing speed checks on Bingley Bypass. Uh, G6R 600 comes past me. Um, Asian lad on it, wearing a helmet, a T-shirt, uh, shorts and motorcycle boots. So you're wearing a helmet and motorcycle boots, but a T-shirt and shorts. So like every bit from this bit down is unprotected, but your ankles, you're protecting your helmet, protected. So instantly I knew that that wasn't his bike and he'd have no license or insurance because you're not driving a motorbike wearing just boots. Um, got behind him, put my blue lights on and he decided to make off. We turned right onto the bottom of Cotton the Cliff Road and then I just decided to abort because he went up Cotton the Cliff Road at 80, 90, 100 miles an hour. And then it was too dangerous to, to pursue. So I stopped the pursuit and went back to do some normal speed checks. Uh, about five minutes later, we got a call to an RTC on Cotton the Cliff Road. Um, they said it was a motorcyclist in the side of a car. We've turned up and this gentleman on this motorcycle has decided to try and overtake a car that wanted to turn right in front of him. So he's embedded himself into the side of his car, gone over the handlebars, gone over the car, landing the road. And <laughs> the leg that were wearing the boots that wasn't protected decided to fold itself back 90 degrees and then turn round the opposite way. So when I got there, we laid in the road screaming. Um, so we've called him an ambulance and outlined the fact that he'd have been a lot better off if he had some motorcycle pants on him <laughs> and a leather jacket. He basically admitted that the bike wasn't his. He'd taken it without authority. He had no license, no insurance. So not only did he get stopped by the police after all and get convicted for no license, no insurance, and taking a vehicle without consent, he also got about three metal plates put in his leg in a pound of screws. <laughs> so, sorry, it's not funny. But it is, because basically you should have stopped. Uh, another one was a, uh, a pursuit with a stolen motorbike on, um, it was through Keefley actually, through Keefley, through Bingley, and then it went through Bradford and on uh, Valley Road. And the only reason we stopped, because it, it was going into oncoming traffic at 80 miles an hour with no helmet on. If I could have got behind that at the bottom of Cotton Liquor Road again and bottom of the ship and tapped it, I'd have tapped it. It wouldn't have bothered me. And then for people to say, well, you shouldn't do that, you should let them go. Why should I let them go? If a criminal's on a stolen motorbike, even if he's got an element on, why should I let you go? If you've broken law and you've committed a burglary, a rape or a, an armed robbery, why should I let you go for your own safety? No, it doesn't work like that. You shouldn't be on that bike. You shouldn't be committing um, offences and you shouldn't be making off. Um, so I'll give you an example of what happened when we had a, um, a scooter. We had an old T5 Volvo and we were in Windell and we kept on getting these lads that would be saying, you can't pursue us, you can't pursue us. Woo. Yeah, kind of lads that would be just making off on these little scooters. And this lad had a, um, a Zip 50. I don't know if you remember them. Like these, I think it were a Peugeot Zip 50. And it was a stolen bike and he was going around the state. We couldn't catch him we, when we knew he was. But as we, we go up, um, I think it's Shipperfields Road and we turn right, it comes directly outside of us. So put lights on T5, not laps at all. We set off outside of him, blue lights going, and he's again, 25 mile an hour. Woo, come get me officers. So I said to my colleagues, I'm not having this. So I dropped it in a second, floored it, and there's a, he's then on the curb with a wall on his left and parked cars on his right. He's got nowhere to go but front or back, that way. He can only go that way. And he's deciding to go that way at 20 mile an hour. So coming up, there's a junction with a road to my left. So I just shot up, anchored on left and stopped the car. And just as the car came up to stop, I just heard this, boof, this is it, front wing at car. And in a, <laughs> as he's come across front windscreen and front bonnet, 
landed in the floor. He got locked up. Yeah, he had some scratch on his knees and scratch on his wrists. And we got the stolen bike back. But this is what should be happening. If you fail to stop on a motorcycle, we should be taking you off. One of the things that boils my piss, as I've said before, are quads in motocross bikes and people wearing balaclavas. First of all, you look like a set of dicks. No one wears a balaclava apart from SAS or someone in Alpine, whatever, doing some skiing because their head's cold. You don't wear it in Shipley. You don't wear a vest. Your Nike Air Max Besties Super Trackies, whatever they are, and a man satchel. Uh, and then when you're giving the bobbies the fingers and then you want to have a pursuit, you need to know that the fact that you're riding off for a bike that you've stolen out of a shed. It doesn't belong to you. So you're also riding someone else's bike. You don't have a license to have insurance. It's our right then to take you off. Uh, if we do take you off, you can't moan, you can't complain, uh, and you need to take it on chin. If you're a big boy playing big boy world with your big boy pants on, uh, just be prepared to be tapped off your bike. Um, and yeah, basically, anyone that's on a stolen bike, especially a Crosser or a KTM or a, a CR500 driving through Shipley Wheelie and thinking you're a bad boy, you're not a bad boy. You're just a, basically a thief in a shit bag. So. <laughs> has, has there been any, any uh, occasions where the prosecute the police for knocking them off by. Um, I don't know if this, where they've prosecuted them off. The, you, obviously, you get an internal investigation, and if it were to class as dangerous driving, you get prosecuted for dangerous driving or due care and attention. The only thing was, you saw what were happening down in London. They were doing, there were a fleet of massive robberies, and armed robberies, doing jewellers, and there were this um, pursuit guideline where you can't pursue, but then it were getting stupid because they, they all knew there'd be gangs going around robbing people at knife point, robbing jewellers. And they just says, right, we'll just change TPAC law. Simple fact is, if it were, it's not safe to do so, but if you can take them off, take them off. And the idea of a pursuit is you always stop the pursuit before it starts. So if I'm, if, well, I can't do it now because I'm, well, I probably would do it if you were in, if I come across a, <laughs> a shop burglary or something like that, I'd ram you. Um, <laughs> and I wouldn't think twice about it as well. Plus I wouldn't go through my insurance so I could create as much damage as I wanted to. No, there were, um, like I said, you've got to end the pursuit before it starts. So if you're coming around the corner in a traffic car and there's two motorbikes in the road with balaclavas on and they're doing smirk, first thing first, if they're not moving, just ram them. Because you'd rather them fall over and get up and start to run than engage in a pursuit. Pursuit goes through Shipley and Bradford at 70 miles an hour. They end up knocking someone over and killing them or they fall off and kill themselves. But you're putting yourself in that predicament. I'm not teaching you to go into a bank with a shotgun and ask for your money and then you're complaining when you come outside and firearms shoot you. So why are you complaining when you're on a stolen motorbike with a balaclava on and you get behind, you get police get behind you and tap you? You've got nowhere to go with it. So as far as I'm concerned, you can do it legitimately or don't do it at all. But if you don't do it, expect to get taken off. And especially, like I said, I was doing now and out media portraying it in, in cops down south or something. It's a, it's a glory thing. We do watch the video and we will laugh at you.